So are a lot of vineyards planted in pergola here? Well, they used, to, they used to be more. I mean, I remember when I was a kid that everywhere in the region you would actually see pergola. What is the history of pergola? I mean, the history is so that this is very much the natural uh, historic training system. As you can see, most of the Valpulicella hills are quite steep. So the best way and the easiest way to really uh, grow a vineyard was by building these terraces. And therefore having pergola, which as you can see, it means fairly tall uh, vines which then grow or develops to, can I call them arms, but the grape bunches would at some point kind of fall down and get the sunshine and mature. And that's uh, meant to be picked only by hand. And then if you refer to the, to the big boy, to the Valle Amarone, the most prestigious wine, you know that every grape bunch has to be picked by hand and then dried for over 100 days. And it's, it's a lot easier and better when you go select the best clusters of Corvina, if you can do that in a pergola. This really represents the history, uh, particularly for that. It smells delicious, yeah, it? yeah, it tastes really good. You know, the Valpulicella area though, is called the land of cherries. You can oh. see going around guys, lots of cherry trees and they really have a very important, uh, they have a lot of influence, as we say, to the vines. And that's why when you, when you, when you crash and ferment uh, Corvina and Rondinella, I mean fresh, right after the harvest, you get a lot of these cherry, cherry notes, which is really part of uh, the Valpolicella's DNA, I would say. Salute! Salute. Grazie! <laughs> Cheers! Grazie. And welcome! Should I say that again? <laughs> <laughs> I mean...